Now, wait for it. It's not going to be long before the Home Office try to pull the same trick here as the PS and I do over there, over anonymity of police officers and staff. Which, to be fair, I do kind of understand if it's a serious offence and family members may be at risk. But this is another example of how police are getting away with what you and I certainly wouldn't be afforded, the luxury of anonymity. A PSNI constable has been dismissed for stealing a bicycle from the police storage and taking it home. Now what's funny about this is that the same constable had spoken to the bike's owner several months prior over a report for concern for his welfare. The constable had retrieved the bike from a local park where it was rep reported as abandoned. The owner is said to have been pissed, fell off his bike and then, in anger, threw the bike away. The man was known to police in an, and in an attempt to get his bike back, he was able to provide police with the model, make and colour of the bike. But despite this information, the constable refused to allow him to have it back unless he could provide proof of purchase when he was sober. It said the man never went back and there was no record of the constable trying to make contact with the man afterwards to return his bike. In March 2021, a sergeant is said to have raised concerns. But on what and why is information I haven't had the time to fish out yet. But to be fair, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. A search of the constable's home took place where the bike was found. Marie Anderson of the police ombudsman said the officer had taken advantage of the man's vulnerabilities and seized an opportunity to take the bike for his personal use. The bike was eventually returned to the owner after being found at the officer's home during a police search organised after a sergeant raised concerns in March 2021. Unfortunately, the owner died a few weeks later, but not before having made a complaint about the officer who had taken it. I wonder if the officer knew about the complaint before the man died. When the constable was interviewed about the bike, he said that as the man had been unable to describe the bike's suspension or brakes, he had not been satisfied that it belonged to him. He also claimed to be unaware of the police's procedure for lost and found property, claiming that he had been told by a sergeant to leave the bike for a few months and then either dispose of it or take it. He actually said there were two sergeants in the room at the time and one of them said, if you don't take it, I will. However, the police ombudsman found that the constable's account was dog shit, noting that he made no record of this in his notebook or on police systems of having taken it home, and that there was no other evidence that either sergeant had advised that he could do that. They also said the officer was likely to have known the man would be unable to provide proof of ownership, and noted that the officer already owned a bike of the same make and would have known its value. So this cretin, who's not exactly committed crime of the century again, but has had his name omitted from reports, already had a bike of the same make. And it's pretty obvious to me then he probably wanted it for spares. And regardless to the value of the bike, which by the way was about £500, which I don't think should even come into it, because let's face it, someone who doesn't have a lot of money would easily see a £50 bike as being expensive. This piece of shit stole from a man who was noted in the hearing as being vulnerable, gave him an almost impossible task of producing proof of ownership by way of receipt, which from reports of the man being intoxicated, known to be vulnerable, and with a constable telling him to come back with proof when he's sober, leads me to believe that the guy was probably alcohol dependent, meaning that it's highly unlikely that he would have the receipt, or even know where it is. And the cop knew it. Thankfully, this dishonest piece of shit has been dismissed, but yet again goes to show how those in positions of authority feel that they can pretty much do what the fuck they want and get away with it. I'm glad the sergeant raised concerns though although it was probably more to do with them falling out rather than genuinely trying to do the right thing. 